So 2023 has been an interesting year. A lot happened. Unfortunately, not all of it was good when it comes to the entertainment world, but it was certainly interesting. For example, Disney celebrated their 100 year anniversary, starting the company in 1923. Unfortunately, they saw a lot of box office flops this year, and also Disney Plus has been bleeding money, and also the actor playing their big bad for the MCU, Jonathan Majors, ended up getting convicted of multiple charges. So despite the major milestone, this year has been an absolute disaster. This really should have been Disney's year, but they totally blew it. I think Disney has been making some poor decisions as of recent years, and it caught up to them now. They basically flooded the market when it comes to the MCU, churning out multiple shows and movies within the same year, to the point where it became too much, and audiences were overwhelmed. Along with the MCU being pretty directionless after Endgame, sure they were leading up to Kang, but there was also the multiverse and the post-snap to deal with, and it got to a point where there ended up being a lot of plot holes too, because it felt like they weren't really keeping up with all their own own canon. Movies and shows that were supposed to lead into other movies and shows ended up floundering because the writers weren't actually communicating with each other. Like I've talked before about how the writers of Multiverse of Madness hadn't actually seen WandaVision. Granted the show wasn't done yet, but at the same time they could have at least talked to the writers and asked them what their plans were for Wanda so that way it could match up better in their movie. But also they're churning out too much content too fast to begin with anyway, and it also resulted in exploiting VFX artists. The MCU had once dominated the box office, but Disney mismanaged this franchise. It didn't need to fall off this hard. Can they really blame audiences for moving on? Disney has a huge mismanagement problem, to the point where other sectors are also suffering. A lot of people, myself included, were hoping that Wish would be really good, but instead it was so bland and by the numbers that people were accusing it of being written by AI. Although it seems more like a case of corporate meddling, there were a lot of cool and fun ideas in the planning stage stages of this movie, which we saw in the concept art, but a lot of those compelling ideas ended up getting stripped away, and I think it was to the movie's detriment. Things like making Star a shapeshifter, and being a love interest for Asha, or having the king and queen both be an evil power couple. Personally, I wish we could have seen these. Instead, the villain ended up being really flat, and I understand this is their 100 year anniversary, but all the references to other Disney properties made Wish feel like it had trouble finding its own identity. I wish they had just made once upon a studio a feature-length film instead of just a short because I genuinely feel like this did a much better job at capturing Disney and the impact that they've had over the last century. It would have been cool if they just expanded on this, maybe dived more into the history and Oswald the Rabbit. That would have been really neat to see, but I'm glad that this short exists. At least we had one bright spot in this mostly disappointing 100 year anniversary. Warner Brothers also had a pretty difficult year. They've been doing some odd management decisions too, like canceling a lot of movies that have either been completed or near completion. One of these movies, Scooby-Doo and Crypto 2, ended up getting leaked online. It ended up getting an official release a while later, which makes me wonder if the leak had anything to do with it. It was already available, so they might as well make it official. Who knows really, but I am glad it got an official release. Their own superhero movie division has not fared much better than the MCU, with major releases like Flash and Aquaman 2 severely underperforming. Flash was pretty much DOA, considering all the controversy that Ezra Miller had gotten into, to the point where I'm honestly surprised they were never replaced. On top of that, the movie itself just wasn't very good. It was pretty clear that they just threw in the multiverse for the sake of following trends, rather than it really benefiting the story. So that ended up being a flop. Apparently things are so bad that now Aquaman 2 is going to be the last official entry into the DCEU, and this is likely to be Momoa's last time as Aquaman. While the DCEU has had tumultuous times, Aquaman was actually one of their major successes, and even helped repair Aquaman's reputation in pop culture, since he's often seen as kind of a joke character. So it is pretty unfortunate to see it fall so hard. Warner Brothers really fumbled the bag here. I guess we'll see if James Gunn can do any better. WB did have a major hit this year with Barbie. The Barbie movie ended up being the highest grossing film this year, ranking in over a billion dollars at the box office. I'm not sure if it'll be enough to fix all of Warner Brothers' financial struggles, and admittedly I didn't 
didn't personally vibe with this movie. It did give me an excuse to talk about my obsession with fashion dolls, though. Now Mattel and WB have partnered up to make an entire cinematic universe of their properties, but I don't think it's safe to expect all these movies to do as well as Barbie did. We saw this with Hasbro already, who tried to make a cinematic universe out of their properties and board games. Barbie is their biggest brand name, and it has a fun and colorful aesthetic. Well, I'm not sure their other properties can rely on those things, like Barney and Friends or the Magic 8-Ball. I also worry that they're going to rely too heavily on the politics from the Barbie movie, when that might not translate well to other brands. Like, who wants to see a depressed Barney? And I think it's probably a mistake for them to advertise Barney in this way. Like, the first thing we find out about it is that it's going to focus on millennial angst. I mean, the Barbie movie really didn't focus on the politics at all in their marketing. It mostly focused on the bright and colorful sets, and the incredible costuming, and instead alluded to the deeper themes. But the trailer never actually said things like dismantling the patriarchy or Barbie's depressed right now, but that's kind of how they're treating Barney. So yeah, I'm not sure how to feel about most of this. I do think they probably could get some really interesting stories and have a lot of fun with these properties, but I do worry they're going to focus on the wrong things. So we'll see how that turns out. I would be interested in seeing what they do with American Girl. That series has always been known for being pretty dark, and I thought the SNL parody sketch they did was pretty funny, but having a movie where all the girls are together and sharing their traumas would actually be pretty interesting. So hopefully that'll turn out to be good, whether they decide to make it a comedy or not. 2023 also saw the premiere of Velma, which was universally panned across the internet, which is pretty rare, but it was for good reason in my opinion. And season 2 has been greenlit, which really sucks because I have to review it. We're also getting the second season of Masters of the Universe Revelation, which I'm also not looking forward to, but we'll have to review any way, so I hope you guys can look forward to that. But on a more positive note, 2023 was actually this channel's biggest year so far, so that was pretty exciting. We're almost at 50,000 subscribers, and it's all thanks to you guys, so thank you so much for all your support. Em really appreciates it too. She's mostly been behind the scenes this year, but she really appreciates the support. So here's hoping for the best for 2024. Thanks for watching this video, and Happy New Year everyone! Before I go, I want to give a shout out to the members. Members, Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Takari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Felix Bam, Soundboy00, Keaton and Fiora, Lucas Geist, Jay Draws, Blue Spirit, Bandito Bane, Meowzers, Sky, Jin KZ, Philip, Stutania, Isaac Martinez, and Data Dine Executive. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support the channel that way. And if you enjoyed this content, I'd appreciate it if you left a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And that part's free. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.